As a scientist who bases 100% of their research around the 2008 video game Spore, it seems obvious to say that I've already tried many different ways of harnessing the game's power to create the perfect specimen. I've tried recreating humans, I've tried super specimens, I've tried pears, but none of them have worked out so far. With this in mind, it struck me that I might need a bit of help, so I decided to turn to a form of more traditional media. That's right everyone, anime. Specifically the ever popular series of Attack on Titan. In Attack on Titan, humanity has been forced behind walls, thanks to the emergence of big, disgusting, horrible man-children called Titans. In the series, there are nine different people who can transform themselves into these titans at will. These are called the Nine Titan Shifters. These people are incredibly powerful, to the point where nations use them as their main weapons. And I thought, hang on, I want to use a giant naked man as my main weapon. My experiment would involve recreating each of these nine one after the other. Where else to start then but with the most prominent and infamous, the Attack Titan. The Attack Titan is used by Eren Jaeger, and it was one of the first ones to be revealed in Season 1. The Attack Titan is strong, fast, and has a couple of main moves such as punch, and sometimes kick, and then there was that one episode where Eren did some sort of chokeslam wrestling move. It's pretty basic, and that's why I chose to start with it, because it provided a good place to initiate my construction, really get the form of my creature solidified. One problem I did run into is that the Attack Titan does have beautiful flowing black hair, and that's very difficult to recreate in Spore. So what I've done is I've used this feather body part to reproduce something similar to the weave that the Attack on Titan sports. And I think you'll agree, it's perfect. Such a majestic creature. I mean, I don't know about you, but I can't tell whether this is in-game or whether it's the actual anime. With the Attack Titan up and about, I decided to take him for a test drive. And after a short stroll, I ran into another type of Titan. But this wasn't a creature from any anime. No. This was an epic. Perfect, I thought. If I can prove that my Titan can beat an epic, then I've got nothing to worry about. Of course, I was getting a little ahead of myself here, and unfortunately, things didn't go that smoothly. After this crushing defeat, I decided to find an opponent more my level, and after a quick search, I stumbled upon the Goat Men. Listen, I may have lost to an epic, but I'm not gonna lose to a bunch of goats. Am I? Oh god, am I? One thing was painfully obvious. What the Attack Titan had in raw strength, it clearly lacked in defense. But don't worry, because I had an idea. You're not going to believe me when I say this, but in Attack on Titan there is actually a Titan which is basically just a walking shield. That's right, I'm of course talking about the Armoured Titan. I got to work straight away. To really sell the effect that this is the Armoured Titan, I decided to put a load of armour on it. I know guys, I know, it's okay, you can stop clapping now. And after even more concentration, I remembered something even more important. The Armoured Titan's main trump card his ability to charge. Because the Armoured Titan's body is so durable, in the series he's able to charge through walls and things. My Armoured Titan would do the same, only instead of charging through walls, he would charge through other creatures. And my first targets would be the Goat Men. As I made my approach, I tried to remain quiet to keep the element of surprise. The clunking of my armor gave me away a little bit, but it's fine. Now it was time for my charge attack, and within a flash, I'd taken out the first goat man. There were a few complications as I was then chased by the second goat man, meaning I couldn't get enough distance to perform a second charge attack. But after a bit more jiggery pokery, the goat men were no more. <laughs> Looks like we're on to a winner here, boys. I thought as I moved onwards to test the armored titan on another species. These dragon-looking things would do, and I once again began to employ my charging technique, which worked wonders yet again. That is, until the dragons started chasing me too. Unlike the goat men though, the dragons moved as a pack, and overwhelmed by their sheer numbers, I had no option but to turn tail and run. Unfortunately, the sheer amount of armor I had meant my creature couldn't run at his optimum speed, and like the attack titan, he eventually bit the dust. It seemed if I was going to succeed, I would need a titan that was big, but also didn't get weighed down like the armored titan seemed to. And in my opinion, the colossal titan fit this agenda. In the anime, the colossal looks rather different to the others. Instead of having skin, it's really just a big ball of muscles. To imitate this effect, I used Spore's painting features, and eventually I had something I was happy with. The clue to the colossal titan's power is in its name. It's just very big. My creature was monumental. I couldn't even describe to you quite how big this gargantuan specimen is. 
Wait, hang on. It's barely taller than these monkeys. Oh god, it's not that big at all. Or no, maybe these monkeys are just really, really big. Like King Kong, or Donkey Kong, or Curious George. I don't know, is that guy big? It could be useful to take one of these Donkey Kongs with me, I thought. It certainly couldn't hurt. But this is where the Colossal Titan's in capabilities started to show. It just wasn't that charming. Sure, it could dance around a bit and strike the odd pose, but it wasn't doing a very good job at winning the monkeys over. I needed a titan that was as beautiful as it was menacing. And there's only one titan that I can think of that's pretty damn sexy. The female titan. The female titan is pretty unique in the Attack on Titan world, because I don't know if you guys noticed, but it's actually a woman. Let's just ignore the fact that two of the other titans are women as well. I would harness the sheer beauty of the female titan to woo the Donkey Kong monkeys over to my side. And together, we would wreak havoc. Mwah! It's a masterpiece. Surely not even King Kong himself would turn this 10 out of 10 down. As it turns out, I was completely wrong. The female titan was having even less success than the colossal titan. I mean, I guess in hindsight the colossal titan is pretty sexy too. Hmm, well I guess if I can't befriend the monkeys, there's only one thing for it. I have to become the monkeys. And luckily for me, there's a titan which gives me just that. The beast titan. The Beast Titan is arguably one of the most unsettling titans in the series, and my rendition was probably the most accurate yet. The Beast Titan has several abilities. For one, it can talk. Mm. But more importantly, it's got long Mr. Tickle spaghetti arms. And these arms aren't just for show. They help the Beast Titan perform his signature move. Throwing things. The Beast Titan just loves to throw things. And lucky for me, Sport actually has its own throwing mechanics. Without a second thought, I began to pick up sticks and throw them at the dragon creatures that had given us so much trouble earlier. This succeeded in confusing the dragons, but not much more to be honest. I tried again and again, but to no effect. I even tried dual wielding, which I was sure would at least damage them a bit. As it was though, the dragons began chasing me around again, and it was curtains for the Beast Titan. At this point, I was very much running out of options, so I tried to make the Warhammer Titan, which to be honest, I don't even really understand what the Warhammer Titan does. I think it's made of Play-Doh or something and it can change its shape. It kind of just looks like a mixture between Slenderman and Frozone from The Incredibles. N not like this, basically. Feeling incredibly embarrassed by my Warhammer Titan attempt, I decided to move swiftly on and began work on the Cart Titan. In the anime, the Cart Titan is, um... Unique. It's the only titan that doesn't walk upright, which is good for me because it's easier to recreate in Spore. Moreover, having had issues with the speed of the dragon creatures, the cart titan would be faster and more agile. Uh, the problem comes when we consider the cart titan's other uses. Uh, there aren't any. It's literally just good for carrying things, it can't do anything else. So, let's move on. A lot was now riding on the success of my next titan, the Jaw Titan. In the series, this titan looks like a little goblin, a little baby man little gremlin looking thing, and pretty much all it does is jump up and down. Although this may sound quite lame, I had a sneaking suspicion that the Jaw Titan's hops might work in my favour. And when I met the dragon creatures this time, I put into practice my new tactic. I would use the Jaw Titan's sharp claws to rip the dragons in two, then jump up in the air to avoid their attacks. The old duck and weave. And it seemed to be working very well. The Jaw Titan was able to dispatch the dragons one by one, and although there were a few occasions where it got trapped, eventually my creature levelled up to the top level in Spore's creature stage. Finally, I was able to beat the dragons. And what's more, this newfound power meant it was finally time to create the ultimate titan. This is what I'd been saving for last. My ultimate trump card. The greatest titan of all. The Rod Rice Founding Titan. For those who have no idea what that means, basically there was this guy called Rod Rice. Yes, it's pronounced Rice. It's it's a German name, I think. And he was planning to become a Titan, but he dropped his Titan liquid on the floor. So he tried to lick it up off the floor and it messed him up and it turned him into a big meat caterpillar. I would be recreating just that. Wow. Just look at it. Look at its sheer power. It's beautiful. The perfect specimen. But I couldn't celebrate yet. I needed to give it a test drive, and it wasn't long before I found a worthy opponent. A rogue. Rod Rice, Rod Rice, Rod Rice. But as much as my chanting encouraged him, Rod Rice was struggling, and he failed to beat the rogue. <sighs> well, I'm out of Titans. 
I didn't want to have to do this, but if I want world domination, I guess I have no other choice. In Attack on Titan, there is one man who is even more powerful in his human form than he is in his Titan form. One beefy boy who is so hench, it is said that he can bench press the Colossal Titan with ease. That's right guys, I'm talking about everyone's favourite shouty man, Eren Jaeger. Look at him go, Eren Jaeger, he's so powerful. And I didn't just have one Eren Jaeger, I had a whole team of Eren Jaegers. A whole troop of them. Okay Jaegers, let's roll out. Time to take over the world. Look at them go. Ruthless. Brutal. Watch how they destroy their enemies. See how they feast on their victims' flesh, just like Eren Jaeger does in the series. With this many Eren Jaegers, I bet we could even take down an epic. Go get him, Jaegers! Let's do this, let's go! Oh. Well, sorry guys, there goes the whole plot of Attack on Titan. <sighs> Eren Jaeger died in Spore, I guess. Sorry guys.